as I'm walking in here, a reporter said, typical T-Bird basketball. Uh, we take a lot of pride in our defense, and I really thought, uh, you know, give a lot of credit to Roger Bacon and, and congratulate them and, on what a wonderful season. Uh, you know, they pushed us, they pushed us to, uh, to a test a couple times. You know, we got out on a 10-0 run, and, you know, they came back with another, you know, one-two punch at us with 11-0 run. Um, and give a lot of credit to our seniors, you know, to my left and my right, you know, because we, we really rely a lot on what they do on both ends. Um, you know, we, we, we take pride in our defense. And, and I thought, you know, in the second quarter and third quarter, we really got after them and, and just kind of you know, wore them down. But then you could just tell in the fourth quarter, you know, we were excited, we were jacked, and our, our intensity just really stepped up with uh, the way that we controlled, you know, the defensive game. You know, with Dantez having 11 rebounds, uh, being able to be active on, on both ends and have a guy like him, um, you know, it's, it's truly a blessing and a plus uh, because, you know, Trey's ability to get up and down the floor and, and being able to have a guy like Dantez go inside and out, um, it makes it hard for us to defend. Trey, it looks like you took an inadvertent elbow to the, the eyes. Yeah, headbutt, a little headbutt, head-to-head -head action. Yeah. Okay, oh yeah, everything's fine. Just to uh, right up top of my head, okay? look forehead. Yeah, I'm fine though. Uh, Dantes, Trey, you, know, you guys been here three years in a row. It's every year you start to feel more comfortable after you've been here. Well, I say it's. I mean, this year just feel more special. I, it was like I was already I already been here, so it was like you know nothing nothing was brighter. You know everything I was used to it. You know just another game. You know. Uh, I can say it's different because uh, previous years I had different roles, and this year, uh, Kill took us, me and Trey, uh, in summer and told us we had to step up. And uh, I believe we did that so far, and our job's not finished yet. And for the last two years, you know, they they were the kind of the the uh, Indians. These are my Chiefs now, and it was something that we had a conversation with. You know, where are we going to find our leadership from? And obviously, the summertime really. Uh, Trey took a lot of time to reflect on, you know, he had a shoulder surgery last year, um, so he was out all summer, and the kids worked really hard to get back where he's been. And, but the whole time I think he's tried to understand, you know, what his role is on this team. You know, Dantes, natural born leader. Um, you probably heard us in the locker room right next door that, uh, you know, we were, you know, excited because of, you know, these guys, they, they keep them loose, they keep, they keep it fun. And, you know, when you got a guy, you know, we talk about being a business trip, um, it's not a field trip. They know they have unfinished business uh, from last year that uh, hopefully we get round three with Coach, Qua Coach Kwasniak. So um, it should be a fun day. Coach, that was the first time you guys broke out early. It's like 10 nothing. And, and what's your thinking at that point? You know, you know, wow, we've got a long way to go. It's already 10 to nothing in this contest. Well, it happened so quick. And, you know, I think, you know, you know, Coach Neal from Roger Bacon just, you know, he needed that time out, and that just showed you the kind of firepower that they had. You know, they came back with a 11-0 run. Uh, you know, I talked about being in a, a kind of a fighter's mentality of each guy throwing a bunch of haymakers, and we uh, we knew if we could withstand, you know, that first wave that that we could, that would be all right. And you know, things just weren't working out for us. We know that they they missed their first five shots, um, so I knew they were going to come back with something, and uh, you know. Give a lot of credit to my guys to continue to grind and not, you know, panic at that point. Frank, your expression changed a lot during the game when you started getting the inside and outside votes. He's getting to the rim and he starts knocking down three-point shots. Uh, well, that's, you know, we talk about at the end of the game. This you know, shoot is where you want that to happen. Buddy. Absolutely. <laughs> but you know what? I think all that experience from the last two years that we've had on this stage has helped them be as comfortable as they are. Um, you know, I. I can't, I wouldn't be in a situation if it wasn't for the, the, the five seniors that play, six seniors that play, and, and Thomas Williams because they they just all play together. You know, how many times do we make an extra pass? You know, they play so unselfish. But when you know Trey's finding the open guys, and, and obviously if Dantez is outside, hopefully they're big guys away from the basket too. And um, good things happen when Trey's going 94 feet shooting layups. Frank, you went zone second quarter. Was that just a different look, or give me your thoughts on that? It was a different look. You know, I thought I thought we were prepared, and, and you know they did a gr they did a great job of, of uh, finding the open guys. But I really wanted to just kind of you know slow things down a little bit because it was getting super fast there for a while, where it was literally a layup, layup. I mean, it was kind of a layup drill, and I didn't like it. So it, it kind of forced our guys to get back instead of just matching up. Coach, you 
Frank, has Eason gotten stronger, gotten healthier as the season's going on? Oh, he's playing with a lot more confidence. Uh, you know, I think that's just kind of a senior's mentality. And, you know, I have four seniors that have played on the stage for the last three years. Um, you know, five the last two years. You know, Josh Dixon played almost, you know, he played in every game last year for me. So um, it's, uh, it's pretty special to be able to, uh, you know, to end your senior year uh, on the biggest stage of your high school career. And just talk about your attack mentality today. Just attacking to the rim, attacking to get the rebounds. Two slams at the end. Uh, the two slams at the end. Uh, I knew uh, once he was running out on me, I, uh, it looked like he was coming too fast. So uh, I went baseline and then rose up. But um, uh, I knew uh, when we went to that five and I was on top, uh, we were lacking on rebounds. So uh, I asked Kill uh, if I can go down low. And that's where my rebound starting to kick in. And then um, with jump shots, uh, Trey just found me uh, as he was attacking. So. That's just uh, the one-two punch that me and him have, our chemistry. I don't know how many times he's going to say, uh. <laughs> <laughs> the professional speaker. <laughs> Any more questions? Well, Frank, tomorrow, or I should say Saturday, the lands of the St. Joe's, third straight year for the state title. You know, it's, it's funny, there's a little story back in November. Uh, we had a teacher's conference up in, uh, in Cleveland. And, you know, I uh, thought, wow, there's a chance I could go hang out with Coach Kwasniak. You know, over the years, we've, we've, we've really uh, had a friendship. And I said, oh, I'm coming to town. And, you know, obviously all the Catholic schools were on you know, break. So I said, you know, what are you doing? And he's like, well, we're practicing. I'm like, well, you mind if I come watch your practice? You know, and they lost everybody. Um, so what are the chances of us making, you know, to stay together? And, you know, I did text him the other day. I said it's a shame that he wasn't the, the Division Three Coach of the Year because no one expected St. Joe to be back. And, you know, I stood there at half court with them in their own gym. And, you know, I, I, I worked, my words of wisdom it must have been the, the response. But, um, you know, I kind of shook hands and said, let's make a date and see you in Columbus. And at the time, Coach Quasi was like, I will take that. Um, well, uh, which was granted, you know, before the game, he said, well, I've done my job. Now it's your, t your turn to do your job. And, um, you know, it's been, it's been a great relationship. Uh, obviously, this time around with these group of kids, totally different uh, personnel for, for St. Joe and Coach Quaz. And, um, it, it's a long ways away. Uh, couldn't get here any sooner, but we're super excited to be where we're at right now. Tomorrow, how much time do you spend preparing the ASJ? How much time do you spend watching your alma mater? How much time do you spend watching Lima Senior? Well, we will be watching Lincoln View. We will be watching uh, Lima Senior. Um, but this game 28, we finished 28 games already playing in the 29th game. There's not a whole lot of things that we're going to do differently that we haven't done all season long. We're pretty good at playing defense, different uh, matchups, different zones. Uh, I got a lot of seniors on the floor that are, are well prepared. Um, to be in this at this moment right now. We know we're on a business trip and we're going to take care of business and, and at some point we will have our leisurely fun uh, watching some state tournament games because it's all about the experience too. What do you got for neckwear for Saturday? It's in the mail. <laughs> you hope. I hope. It's coming from Dayton. So uh, I have a, it's called the right tie and uh, He's supposed to be bringing it to me, so we'll see. We'll see what's up. You and Scott Elk are buying together. No. <laughs>